Hello everyone, welcome to this video tutorial on tetra meshing inside an electronic cabinet. This is part 3 of the video tutorial. So these settings will be used when we calculate the prism layer, we go to compute, select existing mesh as the input for prism layer, there is a volume mesh will be used as the input for prism layer and we click on compute. So prism layer calculations have started, we can see various messages appearing within the message window as the prism layer meshing is going on. I assume we'll use the existing volume mesh and then we'll grow prism layers around the components and slowly we'll merge. After the number of layers we have given, it will merge that prism layer mesh with the volume mesh. So we can see that the prism layer meshing is completed and we can see in the model tree within the mesh tab, inside the volume mesh tab, a new type of mesh will appear which is prism mesh. We can see that in the cut plane also. We will see in a white a cut plane showing prism layer. This is how it will appear. So you can see near the components, near the walls of the components, we see prism layer mesh. There are three layers that we have given as we gave in the individual part mesh parameter settings. And you can see that after the prism layer, the prism layer mesh has merged with the volume mesh after three layers. Again for this component, there is three layers of prism and rest of the mesh inside the volume is tetrahedral. So now the total meshing is done. So we will check the mesh for prism layers using default settings. So the mesh check has been uh, done successfully. After that we will check the quality of the prism mesh also by using default settings and most of the quality is above 0.2 which is satisfactory. So after checking the quality, uh, we have completed all the three operations within tetrahedral meshing that is we have generated surface mesh, after that we created volume mesh and we created prism layer around components in order to capture the near wall flow phenomenon. So our meshing is complete and we need to write the mesh file in order to use it as input for the solver. Uh, before that the boundary conditions can also be given with, uh, within ICM inside the uh, family boundary conditions option within the output tab at the top. But mostly we will not give any boundary conditions here. ICM will give its default boundary condition and we will input the file into Fluent. This tutorial is concerned only with tetrahedral meshing so we will not go much detail into how to export mesh. The details of that can be obtained from separate lectures and videos. So once the family boundary conditions or cell zone conditions have been given, we have to select the solver for exporting this mesh. Click on solver icon at the output tab and we set the solver. We select Fluent version 6 as the solver and we click on apply. After this we write the mesh file, before that ICM asks us to save the project file. So this is the output file setup and we give the name of the output file here rest of the uh, settings are default that is we are using 3d solver and so we click on done and our mesh file will be created by the name fluent.msh we will now open fluent solver and import this mesh file that we have created from icm cfd so we'll go to file read mesh file and we will read the just recently created file fluent.msh the mesh seems to be read fairly well, there seems to be no warning or any issues while reading the mesh or importing the mesh. This is the tetrahedral mesh that we have created in ICM CFD. So we will just have a quick check of this mesh in order to see that everything is alright with the mesh that we created. So we click on the mesh check within the mesh setting. So the mesh check was successful and we also see that the mesh count here, number of cells that we have created in ICM. Thank you for viewing this particular lecture. See you in the next lecture.